Good afternoon, everybody. Today, we're gonna to be talking about moving efficiently inside DaVinci Resolve, specifically with your keyboard shortcuts. Now, I am a solo editor that edits videos for YouTube, so my keyboard shortcuts are geared for that. But over the years, I have found that this is the best system for my workflow. So, if you would like to follow along with what I'm doing, I have uploaded my DaVinci Resolve shortcuts to my Ko-Fi page. It is completely free. I don't sign you up for a newsletter when you download them. It is just there as a resource if you're looking for a starting point for a uh, keyboard shortcuts. And so the first thing that I'm gonna talk about is just navigating on the timeline. It sounds small, but it's what we end up doing the most. And the way I do it is I use the S key to zoom out and the D key to zoom in. So if I'm navigating through the timeline, what I will do is I will zoom out with the S key. If I need to jump forward, I will move my playhead and then zoom in. Originally, I was getting really tired of using Alt and the scroll wheel to do this. I just felt like I can move around faster with the S and D key. So again, S, timeline zoom out, D, timeline zoom in. Now, if you don't like my keys or you wanna set up your owns, I'll call out real quick that in order to do so, what you'll do is go up top to the DaVinci Resolve menu and then keyboard, oh, keyboard customization. And this menu is actually really well done inside DaVinci Resolve. You could type in something like delete and it will list all the possible commands that you can map. You can also click some of these buttons here to see what is already mapped to these keys. So that way, if you do free up a button, you can figure out if you want to remap it later. And up in the upper right-hand corner here, these three dots, you can save your own preset, you can import my preset, or if you wanna share it, which is what I did, you can go over to these export preset button. Now let's cover A and F. A is my cut key. I do not like using the blade tool. I know some people enjoy using it, and I think the default is control B to cut. I did, I did not like that a lot. When I'm doing editing like this, I make so many cuts and adjustments that I just, I can't be, I can't be two finger in the, the cut key. So I have A as my cut button, and I have F as ripple delete. Because for me, a lot of times I'm given raw recordings of either streams, uh, gameplays, or talking heads. And so when I need to close gaps like this, I can quickly zoom in on the area that I need to using the D key, cut, drag and select, and hit F. Now there's a couple alternatives to using this that I will demonstrate later, but this is what I feel comfortable with. So again, S, zoom out, D, zoom in, A is to cut, and F, is ripple delete. And for me, I found that when I was using DaVinci Resolve, these were the functions that I used the most. So if you like these, a uh, fantastic, but what I would suggest is whatever kind of buttons that you feel like you're using the most inside DaVinci Resolve. So if there's a certain function that you're calling over and over, that would be what I would recommend mapping to A, S, D, and F. All right, so let's continue to work forward. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly expand out from the home row. I have, So I have the W key just mapped to the normal selection mode. Uh, why? Well, <laughs> what I was ending up finding that I was doing is I was just, sometimes I would click a random button or something. So, you know, maybe I turn on the blade mode accidentally or instinctually because I do game, I found myself accidentally just tapping the W key sometimes. So I just mapped it to my normal button, my normal selection mode, excuse me. But I did do something a little bit smart. I mapped Shift plus W to the trim mode. And if you don't know, the trim mode is what allows you to move your footage left and right while leaving the cut points at the exact same location. This is sometimes called slipping your footage. So if I'm in the middle of a timeline and I need to finally adjust a section of the edit, I can hit Shift plus W to go into the trim mode and then just fine tune my adjustment and then hit W to go back to the normal mode. Next up are my Q and E keys. And I would say these are probably the second most important uh, keyboard shortcuts that you can set up. So again, for probably the 11th time, you do not have to copy mine, but I would pick two that you find yourself using over and over and over and over again. For E, I have select right of the playhead, and for Q, I have select left of the playhead. In the keyboard customization, these are called backwards on all tracks and forward on all tracks. And what this means for me is when I'm manipulating the timeline and I'm trying to move things around, instead of going over here, zooming out, selecting all this, and then shifting it forward, what I can do is hit E to select everything to the right, shift it over, and then vice versa, I can hit Q to bring things over to the left. Again, for me, when I'm working on footage where I have a bunch of stuff over here, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense if I needed to insert a section here for me to like try and drag and select all this stuff. I can just hit E, 
to select everything and then shift it over. Now here's that alternative function to that ripple delete section that I was talking about. A lot of people that I know actually have this map to Q and E instead of this selection mode. For shift Q and E, I have start and end to playhead, and I'll show you what that means. So if I select my clip here, notice where my playhead is located. If I hit shift and E, it is going to ripple delete this clip to the right of my playhead. So again, shift and E takes the end of our clip here and brings it to the playhead. And vice versa, if I were to hit shift Q, it's gonna remove the beginning to my playhead. Again, I think a lot of people actually prefer Q and E to be mapped to these buttons, but for me, I just, I feel more comfortable using, using the current Ripple Delete workflow that I have. Now, something that I forgot to mention, but might be a question that somebody has is, well, how do I delete something without shifting everything over? This is something I have not remapped, but if you just hit the backspace key, it just removes it. So it simply deletes whatever that footage or composition is in the timeline. All right, couple more navigation shortcuts and then we'll move into some more of like the utility uh, keybinds that I have. So for one, you might've already seen me do this. We can hold down the shift and scroll wheel to change the track size of an individual track. And then if you don't have a side scroll wheel, you can hit control and the scroll wheel to move left and right. And then alt will change the timeline zoom level. So again, shift, control and alt plus the scroll wheel. Now, here's some useful ones that you might not have known about. For one, if I am really zoomed in again, so I'm hitting my D key to really zoom in on our timeline, I can use the left and right arrow keys to move my playhead one frame at a time. What if I want to move this fusion composition one frame over or one frame to the right? Well, I can use the comma key to move it over to the left one frame at a time, and I can use the period key to shift it over to the right one frame at a time. So again, left and right arrows, move your playhead, period and comma, shift the actual clip or composition one frame at a time. Now, here's where we're gonna start to introduce modifiers to your keyboard shortcuts, and we've already done it and you didn't know it. So anytime we introduce Control, Shift, or Alt with a keyboard shortcut, it is gonna do some kind of variation of whatever that function is by default, meaning unless you've changed the modifier to do something else, we can hit the shift key with our arrow and go left and right to move in one second increments. And if we have a clip selected, we can hit control and the left and right arrow to move between our different clips. Up and down our arrow key will move us to the next edit point in our timeline. So you'll notice as I'm hitting up and down, it jumps to wherever the next cut is. But again, if we use control and the up or down arrow keys, we can move between our clip selections on the different track levels. And if we use alt and the up key, we can move our track up and down to different track levels. Generally speaking, inside DaVinci Resolve, if you're ever trying to do something slightly different or a little bit more specific, more rigid, whatever, try a combination of control, shift, and alt. I would say nine times out of 10, you're gonna end up figuring out the keyboard combination that you'd like. As an example, in our media pool, we have this section of T talking to the camera. If I want to bring in both the video and the audio, I just drag in that footage. But if I just want the video, I can hold down the Alt key to bring in just the video. And if I want just the audio, I can hold down the Shift key to bring in just the audio tracks. Now, if I would like it to insert between these two points, what I can do is hold down Control and Shift to insert it between the clips and it will shift everything over to the right. So again, that's Control and Shift inserts it. A couple other modifier keys that I'll go over real quick before we move on. If I make a cut here and wanna duplicate our video track, I can hold down the Alt key to duplicate the video. If I select both the audio and video before holding down the Alt key, it duplicates both and vice versa. If I just want the audio, I can drag and select up while holding the Alt key to get both, hold down the Alt key to duplicate or Alt and click to just select one of them before duplicating. The Alt key is kind of the like the separator modifier. So if I wanted to shift this cut point with, for just the video track, I can hold down again the Alt key to shift just that point instead of both. And it works vice versa. So again, I can slip the audio just like that. If I have a video track here and I change the zoom and position and I want to copy these properties so that they go across to the rest of the footage or even just one clip, what I can do is hit Control C and instead of hitting Control V, I can hit Alt V to paste those properties. Last little Alt key tip. Let's say I'm changing the zoom level and I feel like I, it's moving too quickly for me to control it. I can again, hold down the Alt key to fine tune any individual property. 
Similarly, on the audio track, instead of holding down the Alt key to do some fine tuning, I can hold down the Shift key to change my volume level at a more precise level on the timeline level. So one last time, Control, Shift, and Alt are gonna be your best friend inside DaVinci Resolve, which is why, again, I like resting my hand on the Home Bro so that I can easily access those modifiers. All right, let's close out with some really nice utility stuff that I have mapped. Because I got rid of my D key for enabling, disabling clips, I have Control, Shift, D to enable and disable clips. By default, Control R is your retime controls. If you're trying to set in and out points for rendering, I is in, O is out. If you'd like to clear those points, Alt plus I removes the in point, Alt plus O removes the out point. A couple fun ones for you to be aware of. If you hit Shift and Space, you can look up effects from the search menu. Now this is supposed to come, I think, default in the newest DaVinci Resolve update, but I ended, I ended up having to manually map it. So in the keyboard customization, it's called search effects. For me, again, when I updated, it wasn't mapped. So I ended up having to map it to uh, shift and space. One that works on the edit page and not the fusion page for me is if I hit a keyframe on a certain property and then jump forward, this is a custom one that I mapped. If I hit the Z button, it'll add a new keyframe to whatever my last keyframe property was. So if I did zoom and position and I jump forward and hit Z, it's gonna map it only to position because position was the second thing that I keyframed. For whatever reason, this works for me on the edit page, but not in Fusion. So if somebody does know how to map that in Fusion, man, that would be a game changer for me. Speaking of Fusion, I have X mapped to go into the Fusion page. Because I tend to be working with multiple layers, instead of right clicking on a clip and then hitting open in Fusion, all I do now is I just click on it and hit X and it'll take me right into the Fusion page for the adjustment clip, whatever, the whatever media that I'm trying to select. And one of the final ones that I end up using the most is the C button, which I have mapped to open in timeline. So you might've noticed that I actually work with multicam footage. So for me, whenever I'm editing stuff like gameplays or things, when I wanna hot swap between angles, I believe these are default. You can hit Alt, one, two, three, whatever your angle is to swap to the different camera angle directly from the timeline. If you wanna learn about multicam clips, there's a lot of really great tutorials on how do you set up and use multicams. But let's say I wanna make a change to the original footage. Well, what I can do is I can hit C to open it in a timeline. And now I have access to my original multicam uh, timeline that I can work with. And this works for uh, multicams, fusions, timelines inside timelines, and including compound clips. So this right here is a compound clip. And if I hit C, it restores it to whatever I had originally compounded. And speaking of compound clips, I have Control Shift and C mapped to create a new compound clip. So whenever I'm editing, if I need to combine something, it's Control Shift C to compound it. And then if I wanna look at whatever I had compounded, I hit C to go open that up in the timeline. And here's the note I'm gonna be leaving you on. Some of you guys, if you're familiar with the channel, what I do are probably more familiar with me for some things I do in Fusion. And so something that you might be curious about was, well, Brandon, what about Fusion hotkeys? And there is a way to set up Fusion hotkeys inside Fusion, but in good old DaVinci Resolve fashion, the different pages aren't quite synced up yet. But if I hit B, you'll see it adds a background note. And if I hit T, you'll see it as a transform node. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send you over to Jake Whip's video where he walks through how to set up hotkeys inside the Fusion page. So if that is something that you're curious about setting up, go say hi to Jake for me, but let me know if this was helpful. Again, my keyboard shortcuts are gonna be in the shop. And if you guys have any questions on, can I do this or whatever, feel free to leave a comment, but the Discord is always a better place to join and ask questions. Appreciate you guys, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.